going on everybody welcome back to ride the six motorcycle channel we're going to continue working on the zx6r specifically we're going to start getting um, some of this front components off we're going to start taking some brake lines off we're going to clean up all this stuff uh, i'm going to spin the wheel listen to this That's sounding pretty dirty. Um, so I'm going to get these brake calipers off. I don't know if there's dirt or something down in the in the axle, in the bearings. I'm not sure. But yeah, stay tuned. We are going to start taking the front end apart here. Get the calipers off. And see if the wheel's still making that noise, basically. Stay tuned. So we're going to start by removing our brake line from this uh, left caliper, left front caliper, 12 mil socket to get the bolt off the line. It's not on there too tight. Um, we're going to thread it out by hand. Get some rags ready guys because it could be dirty. Uh, brake fluid, as you know, likes to make a mess. So there we go. Just get it right down in your drip pan right away. And we've got the... Uh, a bolt there with a crush washer on it. That's fine. Let me grab another cloth. All right. We'll just kind of clean up this line. We're just going to let it hang in the drip pan there. But uh, we are getting a little bit of fluid out of the caliper itself. I've already cracked the two caliper bolts loose. So those two bolts and your calipers off pretty quick but as you can see this caliper probably needs a little bit of servicing um, it's pretty dirty definitely needs a good cleaning a lot of uh, brake dust and carbon buildup all right I'll put that one aside let's go to the other side let's get the other one off so we're on the uh, the right hand side of the bike now. I've already loosened this bolt again. It's the 12 mil, and this is what this is a hop over brake line. So it has one line down from the uh, the master brake cylinder, and then it hops over to the other side of the bike, similar to the FZ6R. Um, a lot of people like to change those lines out and have two individual lines coming down. It's always an aftermarket piece you could do and we're gonna have a fair bit of brake fluid here because our reservoir is probably pretty full I haven't emptied the reservoir yet we should get a fair bit of brake fluid out of here well wow. get this bolt out here longer than I expected this bolt Okay, there we go, bolts out. Keep an eye on all your crush washers. There's one front and back on every on every brake line essentially. And this is a double banjo bolt on the right hand side. Okay. And there's our main brake line coming down. Not a lot of fluid as of yet. All right, and the same with this brake caliper. I've already loosened the two bolts, the caliper bolts. And we're gonna pull that caliper off, gently not to scratch your wheel. And as you can see, this one is quite dirty as well. Probably in need of a good cleaning. Next thing we're going to do is open up the top brake reservoir. This is just a little Phillips screw. I've already loosened it off. Okay, don't lose these pieces. Put them somewhere safe. And we should be able to unscrew. Okay, there we go. So we're going to unscrew the reservoir. Get all our little parts out of here. Don't lose all these parts. Again, this stuff is messy, guys. 
have a towel ready, have some clean uh, cloths ready. It's messy. We're going to put that down here as well. And we're going to just set it down here with our caliper. All right. So our fluid. Okay, I've got the line hanging down here. I'm trying to keep it off the wheel, or keep it on the wheel. So there's our line. If I squeeze my lever, you can see I can actually drain the fluid out of the bike like this. You can see it's coming out. This is one way to drain your fluid. The other way is just to um, basically disconnect everything. But I'm trying to do it somewhat clean method. So I'm just squeezing my front brake lever. You can see the level in the reservoir is dropping. I want to get all this out of here because I think this brake fluid has seen uh, better days. It's going to drain to the point of where it starts sucking air into the system. But that's fine because we will do a full brake bleed and everything on it when we fill this fluid back up. Today I'm just worried about getting the components off. And we're going to see what that noise and grinding noise is. Let's spin the wheel again now with the calipers off. Look at that. No sound, no grinding. So these calipers are uh, kind of the cause of all that noise in the front end. But I want to take the wheel off anyways too because I do want to give it a good cleaning. So this is kind of necessary. And let me see what I can do with these calipers. Let me see if I can clean them up a little bit. This is the right caliper you're looking at right now. So I may disassemble it. I may take it apart. I don't know. I may just get an old-fashioned toothbrush and, uh, I don't know, some brake cleaner and try to clean it up. All right, I'll be right back, guys. I'll let you know what I figure out here. But uh, I'm glad that... There's no noise from the axle, so that's very good news. Check it out, guys. I um, took one of the front calipers apart. I took all the brake pads out, all the clips, and I've cleaned it up a little bit. So you can see it actually cleaned up very well. Um, now, I tried two different things. I tried brake cleaner. Didn't really do much. But the winner, WD-40. WD-40 and a toothbrush, scrub it up. Wipe it down, and look at that, guys. The caliper's almost like brand new again. So I stopped as far as, I guess, the buckets or the pistons. I just pushed them in. I really didn't do anything. I haven't rebuilt the pistons or the caliper, you know. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to piece it back together. I've taken the front wheel off. I've cleaned the whole front wheel up. I've re-greased the front axle, re-greased all the bearings. I've torqued this back in. Um, this is 94 foot-pounds. My torque wrench only goes to 80, but I mean, 80 is pretty good. I gave it a little extra crank. And yeah, then you tighten your pinch bolts down. This is right side first, then left side, and then right side, then left side. So yeah, front wheel is all cleaned up. She's looking pretty spiffy. Look at those, look at that gold disc. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, let me start putting some of this stuff back together. And hopefully all that grinding's gone when I'm done. Maybe I'll change the brake pads. I'm not sure yet. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're back. So we worked late last night. I had the whole front end off here. I had all the brake calipers off. I've cleaned everything up. I put it all back together. Um, these pads inside these calipers are running a sintered pad so they do make a little bit more noise on your rotors so I believe that's the noise we're hearing um, there's no dirt there's no sand there's no grime per se in the calipers I think that's just the noise the sintered pads make I don't know I've never really run sintered pads before on top of that we did a complete uh, front brake fluid flush you can see how clear the fluid is now 
and we also did we also did the back um, this this is a little bit low I just have to top this back up I ran out of fluid but uh, this old fluid was black when it came out so the last time this rear was serviced was probably a long time so we serviced the rear we serviced the fronts fresh fluid now today I'm going to tackle my ignition switch I've had this kind of just hanging off the side of the bike off my handlebar for a little bit but uh, yeah so that's the next step and we're gonna get that back on the bike stay tuned So well, step one guys in kind of removing your ignition from your top tree on several bikes that I've seen already I've already done one video on my Yamaha. I'll put a link to that in the video. I'll put it right up here, so just click on it. But essentially what you have to do, you have to take a Dremel tool and drill slots into the bolts that hold your ignition in. Um, the reason is because these are shear bolts. And when they go in and when they hit a certain torque, the actual head of the bolt shears off and you're left with something that looks like a rivet. So the only way to get these screws out one is to Dremel them like you have here with a, just a little flat head and then you put a large screwdriver in you have to heat the area up put a large screwdriver in put this in a vise with be between two pieces of wood and turn these bolts out the other option is to weld something onto these bolts and then turn it out that way but anyways this is the quick and easy option that you could probably do yourself so yesterday with the help of my buddy Darren I was able to get the old ignition out so there we go, there's the old ignition. Now, I don't want to reuse these bolts. So I went, I went to Lowe's and I picked up an M6 bolt and these are all the washers and uh, rubber grommets and everything that came out of here. So I'm gonna essentially install my other ignition that I have. I'm gonna uh, thread lock these in, torque them down. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put the other ignition that I have back into the triple tree and we're gonna put that triple tree back on the bike so there it is uh, I did skip a couple steps um, I just kind of ran it some time guys I've been a little bit busy to be honest but anyways I have my used ignition reinstalled back in my top triple tree you can see they kind of jacked up um, this ring around the ignition it's supposed to be round but uh, I'm probably gonna heat that up maybe and just kind of bend it back in place a little bit but it is broken on this side over here. But anyways, I have it all put back together. I have everything torqued in. We have our, since we have our top fork clamps torqued in here, we have all of our handlebars clipped in underneath, torqued in. And I've got the top, uh, I guess, steering stem nut all torqued in. Now, when you put these things back on, make sure your washer is on top of your yoke not underneath it will not sit properly on the bike okay guys so that's kind of all i have for you right now on the zx uh, 636 build so we've taken the front end apart we've cleaned it all up the brakes cleaned up the rear brakes we've got our top yoke fixed up here it's probably going to be a track bike so i'm not too concerned about it being absolutely perfect to be honest um so the next couple things so i still have a gas cap and I need to get the rear in the air, so I need to do some. I need to put a set of spools on this bike because my um, the current stand I have will not lift this bike. And as you can see, it is filthy here in the rear. It needs a new chain. I don't believe I've ordered the chain yet, but uh, the rear wheel's dirty, and I really just want to get in underneath and clean the bike. So I have a set of spools on order. And I have a brand new Vortex gas cap on order as well. And you're going to see that very soon because uh, they've actually arrived. So I ordered some stuff from Fortnite. So one of these is the Vortex pieces for the ZX6. And you're going to see this put on the bike in the next video. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe. If you want to follow uh, kind of what I'm doing with the ZX636 build.
if you're out there riding guys and I know you're not in Canada because the weather's not great right now if you're out there riding ride safe